Welcome back to the vlog. So as you guys can see from the title today, we are gonna go on a little adventure. We are going to go visit the tomb of Marie Laveau. Marie Catherine Laveau was a Louisiana Creole practitioner of voodoo who was renowned in New Orleans. Her daughter Marie Laveau II also practiced root work, conjure, Native American and African spiritualism, as well as Louisiana or what is now known today as New Orleans voodoo. Historical records show that Marie Laveau was born free in the French Quarter, and she was the biological daughter of Marguerite Henry, a free woman of color who was of Native American, African, and French descent, and Charles Laveau Trudeau, who was a surveyor and politician. On June 17, 1881, it was announced in the Daily Picayune that Marie Laveau had died peacefully in her home. However, oral tradition states that she was seen by some people in the town shortly after her supposed demise. One of her daughters, also named Marie, which is a French Catholic tradition to have the first names of daughters be Marie and boys Joseph, then each use middle name as a common name, possibly assumed her position with her name and carried on her magical practice, taking over as the queen soon before or after the first Marie's death. So long story short, Marie Laveau was a voodoo priestess here in New Orleans. She is very important to New Orleans history. I've learned about her. I've known about her since I was a little girl. I've never visited the tomb of Marie Laveau. I've visited her house before. I saw where she lived on St. Anne Street, but I'm going to show you guys where she lived. And um, yeah, like growing up, I was kind of like always scared of her because I associated voodoo with being like an evil religion and um so yeah I was always scared of her every time I would hear her name I would get chills and it was just like who's calling me oh my mom hold on <sighs> what was I saying oh yeah so I was just always pretty scared of her uh, is this air condition really loud I'm sorry but um yeah because just like growing up even like the Disney movie like Princess and the Frog they just portrayed voodoo as being so demonic and so evil and just scary you know but um like as I got older and as I did more research and decided that I wanted to be less ignorant on the subject I saw that voodoo is actually a real religion people really do practice it it was brought from Africa to the Caribbean and then from the Caribbean here to New Orleans um, during the Haitian Revolution so it's not as demonic and it's not evil as people portrayed it to be it was just foreign and foreign things to anybody is a little bit scary and especially I guess to the Catholic Americans here it was just very different and people automatically judge the um, religion before they could even understand it so yeah um, but let me just like look up the actual definition of voodoo that way I can um, inform you guys exactly what it is I don't want to say it off the top of my head because I'm still kind of learning and yeah so I found this article and they're basically explaining what voodoo is because voodoo um, itself is such a misunderstood religion. So um, let me see, let me find some things that... So it says voodoo isn't accurately portrayed in most movies, TV shows, and books. Even some documentaries and non-fiction books are misleading. Voodoo is not a cult, um, black magic, or devil worship. People who practice voodoo are not witch doctors, sorcerers, or occultists? occultists? I don't know. I will put the word over here. Voodoo isn't a practice intended to hurt or control others. And most voodooists have never seen a voodoo doll unless you've seen it in a movie. So that's another thing. When I thought of voodoo, um, I always thought of the voodoo dolls, how you get the pin and you like, there's a doll, right? And let's say there's this person that you don't like, this person that owes you money, this person that you have a conflict with. This 
in your mind would be the doll. You would make the doll to look exactly like that person and then you get a little needle and you poke the person and then it's said to really inflict real pain on the real actual person. You guys know what I'm saying? Y'all know what I mean? I don't know. But um, yeah, so voodoo dolls are extremely popular in New Orleans, especially in the French Quarter. You could go buy them at a tourist shop and a lot of people think that that's what voodoo is. That's what I thought it was until, like I said, I did my research. And so, yeah, so basically it's not a devil worshiping religion. It's not a cult, it's not anything evil. It's not what people portray it to be in the movies. So yeah, I'm not gonna bore you guys with any more of the reading. I just wanted to give you guys a general summary of what exactly voodoo is i do highly encourage you guys to go do your own research if you are interested and see the real facts not just what hollywood shows you because we all know that hollywood could be so extra and i mean understandably because they have to make their movies interesting right but you know it also pays not to be ignorant and also know you know the real version of things you know what i'm saying so yeah without further ado we are going to head to the st louis cemetery that's another thing so supposedly her body is like in three different places i don't know because i read something where people have tried to literally exhume her body from her tomb they have vandalized her tomb they've had like sacrificial like um ceremonies and dark magic around her tomb because there's like i said there's a whole lot of misconception about voodoo and marie lebeau so um apparently her body has been moved i don't know where the real resting place is according to what i researched her real resting place is in the st louis cemetery number one there's also a st louis cemetery number two like I said in a little summary that I had in the beginning, she did have a daughter that also practiced voodoo. So there's two Marie Laveaux's. Um, so people aren't exactly sure which Marie Laveau is buried where. Um, they don't know if the older one is at the St. Louis Cemetery and the younger one is somewhere else or like there's two of them basically. They both did the same thing. Um, the younger one was a little bit more theatrical and not as, I guess, not as true of a voodoo practitioner as her mother but yeah we're gonna see somebody too basically we're gonna see somebody's tomb. we don't know if it's the first or the second one yeah i mean i'm just super excited this is a new adventure for me i have no idea what we're getting into but let's go okay guys so we made it i am parked outside the cemetery um so Thank God my dad called me as I was on my way here and he was like, where are you at? And I'm like, I'm on my way to Marie um, Laveau's tomb. And he's like, oh, I'm, I'm close to there. Want me to just meet you? So I'm like, yes, please do. Because I was low key scared to come by myself because another fun fact, St. Louis Cemetery is supposedly the most haunted cemetery, the most haunted place in New Orleans. So I was a bit nervous about coming by myself, even though it is daytime. So the fact that my dad is here, I'm super happy, super relieved. So now we're about to go walk in and find this tomb. Ready to go get spooked? He always working, y'all. Always. Hello. Hey, what's up? Had my breakfast. Breakfast. Had my meetings this morning so far. Now it's time to see Marie. Now it's time to see tombs. Now it's time to see tombs. That's what we do in New Orleans. That's what we do. We go. We go to work. Tomb sighting. <laughs> So we do have a whole bunch of just random cemeteries like in the middle of the city. Like right here is like a parking lot, a building. And then here you have a big cemetery like. Yep, you're right across from the- uh, Dead people everywhere. Yeah, there's a visiting center right there for yeah. tourists. And then on the other side of this um, cemetery is a police station. Yeah. 
Across the street is uh, Mahalia Jackson's Theater. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Congo Square is around here too. Congo Square is right, right behind Mahalia Jackson. Yeah. Congo Square is a, um, is a historical place uh, during slavery. We could take them there in the next that's block. Where, that's where the uh, Africans would congregate on Sundays after church and they would dance to their native music and, and they would um, share their dance. And also this was a place where a lot of the languages were kind of mixed mm -hmm. and they were able to start learning how to communicate with each other because remember, um, when they came over, they were from, a lot of them were from different tribes. Right. And they couldn't communicate. A whole bunch of different African languages. Yes. Yeah, so in the next video, the next vlog, I could show you guys Congo Square if you would like me to. I have a whole bunch of places I want to take you guys to. So, um, yeah, just let me know what places y'all are interested in and we could go there, talk about it, show you guys. New Orleans is a really cool place, a lot of history, so, yeah. but apparently it's no longer free because people would vandalize her tomb and like t try to take her body out of her tomb. When did that change? In 2015, the archdiocese made that a rule. Oh. That you could only go see the cemetery if you're with a tour. So yeah, so now we're gonna go, go, go get tickets so that we could go in the tour. But um, yeah, so that's what's going on. Okay, another update. We just went in the uh, tour center. So when we went to St. Louis Cemetery number one, Where I was questioning them because I think they didn't think I was as educated as I was about it. I knew there's two Marie Laveau's, the mom and the daughter. I want to see the mom's tomb because she was like the real She's priestess. the original OG, She's right? the original OG. I want to see her. So she is buried in the St. Louis Cemetery number two. Um, this one is number one, the one that her daughter is buried in. But, I mean, her daughter's cool, I guess, but I want to see the mama. So, we're going to go. Oh, and then St. Louis Cemetery number two is also free. We don't have to pay to go into that one. That one's open to the public. So, I'm like, why would we pay to see the daughter? The daughter? Right. <laughs> like, it's like, why would they pay to see you when they can see me? No. It's right? not like that. Yeah, that's what it's No, like. right. it's not. So we're heading to um, St. Louis number two, which is about three blocks away. And we're gonna go see the mama. Mama queen. The mama queen. <laughs> the mama queen of voodoo. That's right. All right. But yeah, so like I said, the Catholic Church um, made it a rule to only be able to see cemetery number one with the tour guide because a lot of people were vandalizing. Why, Why else we found that? And money and money to politics money politics. to rebuild the cemetery back up no but not only that what a, the and there's more important people, people buried in, in here in buried in this number one. one right yeah then cemetery number two so somebody didn't want their parents being stepped on i guess yeah so Ooh, that makes sense yeah. like important people right important like, people right right the so, old money families are probably right, buried in here right so the no money family are is number two where, <laughs> is where number two is where the original og is yeah, and we're told that she was probably buried with slaves and everything else. You right, see? right. That's probably why it's no big issue. And um, we were told by the worker at the center that there's a lot of homeless people that's always so, in number two. So I'm going to be dad slash bodyguard. Yeah. So two, I guess, how do we find it? Huh? St. Louis Cemetery number two, I guess yeah. you just put that in the GP. Okay, let's go. What's that? It's a banana. A bone? Yeah, see it? Ooh. A bone? Maybe somebody was doing some worshiping or something. That's not a bone. It's like a neck bone, girl. You know oh my gosh. What's really going on? So, like I said in the summary earlier, uh, Marie Laveau was a Creole woman. So there's a lot of confusion behind the word Creole if you're not from like the South, especially in Louisiana. And when I tell people that I'm Creole, it basically, all it is is like a mixture of 
African descent, Native American descent, French and Spanish descent. And it just means that your ancestors lived in Louisiana and intermingled and had kids together before New Orleans became a part of America. Because for a while, New Orleans wasn't even an American city. It was its own country, if that makes sense. Like it was owned, what was it? Ruled by France and in the Spain. Spanish in, in Spain. Spain, right. So it was not even a part of America. America so basically- the Louisiana Purchase? Yeah, the Louisiana Purchase made it a part of America. And the Louisiana Purchase at that time was basically half of the geography of America. When they purchased the Louisiana, the Louisiana Purchase, yeah. it goes all the way up to Oklahoma, I believe it is. Wow. So it's not just Louisiana. Yeah. Basically, a person who was of Creole descent is a person whose ancestors were here before Louisiana became America, basically. And all its original inhabitants. Before the Union. Yeah before we were a part of the union. So yeah, that's what, I don't know if that helps make it a little bit easier to understand, but it's kind of it in a nutshell. What side is she on? I don't know. There's two sides, there's this side and there's this side. I don't know what side she's on. This was established in 1823. Another fun fact. All of these tombs are up because New Orleans is extremely below sea, sea level. So we can't bury our people in the ground like everyone else could. We have to bury them above ground because if we bury them in the ground, they will literally be in water. So that is why the tombs are risen instead of in the ground. And the bodies are actually inside of these. So yeah. It's a family plot, Taylor. Wow. Yeah, but normal's not catching all of it. It's like fifteen people in this one on one side. And there's a whole other side to it. Wow. Okay guys, we're having a hard time finding it. It seems like they publicize the daughter's tomb a lot more than this one. So there's not much information on the internet about what plot it is and the directions to find hers. Oh God, I just stepped on it. So we're looking. I hope we could find it, y'all. I really do. If not, then we might have to just settle for the daughter, even though I don't want to. There was a hole in that tomb. It's like you could see in it. Where? Right here. Look. 
Oh my goodness. Y'all see that? It's a hole in there. Oh my god! You can't even see the markings on this one. It's that old. Looks like people left beads and a cross and shells and nails. Look, they have a cross, a rosary. Yeah. On this one. But this that, person died in 1782. 1867. Look, November 1867. What about this? It says 17. Oh, wow. Might be two people. One Might, at the bottom, one at yeah, the top. More than likely. And I can smell it. Smell what? Come right here. Dead bodies. That's the smell of dead bodies. It is. Wait, are you serious? I'm serious. I'm serious. You can still smell them? Yeah. You know, I used to. You work in a. What, that's what I did. Dad, are you serious? Yeah, I know what I did. I used to run morgues, guys. My previous life, I'm a histologist. That's what I used to do. So I ran a morgue. At, I did at smell a, at something right there. And we would do autopsies. So I, do, I know the smell of death, and I just smelled it. Wow. Oh my god. Okay, I want to hurry up and find this tomb so we can get out of here. No, this one's completely open. Go look inside. I'm not going over there. Go ahead. No. They're dead, Taylor. Yeah, I'm not, you go. You go look inside. Girl. Oh, wow. Why is it open? I don't know, but there's, there's wasp in there. As they take the tombs out, or the bodies out. Wow. Man, let's find Marie. Why is she so, so hard to find? We found it, we found it. We were looking for the long, the big cross. In the sky. In the sky, there it is. I don't know if you guys can see it. Right there. Yes, we finally found it. Okay. Here we go. We're coming, Marie. <laughs> hey, guys. So, we thought we found it. We didn't find it. And it's extremely hot. I'm getting so light. Uh -oh. What? That might be it. You, you see it? There's another cross up there, like... Now I'll see her. I don't know, y'all. All I know is that it's really hot, and we've been looking on the internet for her tomb and it seems like all the information is just about cemetery number one we can't find her tomb in cemetery number two i don't know why they don't have more information about that but yeah so we might just have to come back another day and go to cemetery number one and see her daughter's tomb because apparently that's the more popular one and that's where everyone visits so, today was kind of a fail, kind of not. I still got to show you guys um, the cemetery. Also, we still have to go to her house. So we're gonna go to her house on St. Anne Street in the French Quarter where she lives. So yeah, we couldn't find her tomb today, but I promise you guys, I'm going to show you one of her tombs, either whether it's hers or her daughter's. And, um, and we're gonna go ahead to the house now. So yeah. So we decided to come eat y'all. Starving. Nothing like after a uh, cemetery visit. <laughs> Lunch. 
Nice. Oh. What makes you hungry? Dead body. Yeah. <laughs> Ew. Baked chicken and red beans. Ooh, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Oh my gosh. This looks scrumptious. <laughs> We're done eating. It was so good. I'm so stuffed. And I feel like life came back into my body because I was literally dying earlier. So, like I promised, we are going to go see Marie Lobo's house since we could not see her tomb today. I'm really trying to get this video up for you guys today. Otherwise, I would have just waited and took the tour. But like I said, I want to get this video up for you guys today. It's already 3 o'clock. And so, yeah, I have to hurry up, go home, edit, post. Um, like I said, in the next video, I will... Um, show you guys the tomb and we will do the tour well maybe not the next video but definitely in a video soon and um yeah so to marie's house we go But yeah, this is where she lived. That's 1022. She stayed in 1020. Marie Laveau's house, you guys. And it even says right here, Marie Laveau and her children lived at this site between 1839 and 1895 before the circa 1905 construction of the existing cottage. So yeah, this is it you guys, this is where she lived. And let's see right here, well look at this house. Right here, it says Marie Laveau Apartments. I don't know if you guys can see that. Marie Laveau Apartments. Yeah, got the snake in a burning kettle pot. Yeah. The history of this place is insane, you guys. Looks like it's for lease. So, if you wanna live in Marie Laveau's old house, here you have it. You can come lease it out, you guys. <laughs> and what's going on over here? I don't know. No idea. 